There are thousands of known caves all around the world, but because their formations are below the surface of the ground, no one really knows for sure just how many there are. And if you've ever seen a cave, then you know that it's impossible not to wonder and get curious about what exactly is down inside. Though the answer is usually something like stalactites, bats, or darkness and silence, our imaginations can't help but wonder about the eerie secrets that these cavernous places could hide. So in today's video, we're going down deep to explore some of the strangest things ever found down below the earth. Here are five bizarre discoveries found in ancient caves. Number five, 78,000. Much of what we know about the development of complex social behaviors among us humans, like burials and mourning, is believed to have originated from Eurasia. However, a recent cave discovery has shed some new and shocking insights about our ancestors. In 2013, a team of researchers coming from all around the world, including Germany, Spain, and the U.S., convened at an archaeological cave site located in Khalifi County in southeastern Kenya. Called the Penga Ya Sadi, this cave site holds rich archaeological deposits with some dating back as early as the Middle Stone Age, the Latter Stone Age, and the Iron Age. While most of their finds are quite surprising in their own right, the one that really stunned them all was the discovery of the remains of a child they lovingly called Mtoto, which is the Kenyan word for child. This is the story of Mtoto, Almost 80,000 years ago, this small child died at the tender age of two and a half to three years old. Upon his death, his parents and kinsfolk laid him on his right side in a shallow pit dug inside a cave near Kenya's coast. His legs were raised to his chest in a flex position and his body wrapped in a special cloth. An expert surmised that this could be animal skin. His head was placed gently on some kind of a support, a pillow, knowing that he'd be sleeping for a long time. The final rite saw him Toto lovingly covered over with dirt taken from the cave's floor. And there, on that same spot, the young infant slumbered for thousands of years. Through time, soil accumulated in that area, burying him Toto three meters deeper into the ground. Painstaking efforts were made to excavate the fragile remains. Archaeologists had to cover them up in plaster and then remove them intact with the block of sediment in which the boy was buried. The samples were then sent to the National Research Center on Human Evolution in Spain, the leading institute in hominin paleobiology. This branch of science focuses mainly on the understanding of humans' evolution. This discovery in this cave offers some insight on how the early Homo sapien population in Africa treated their dead. You see, child and juvenile burials were only initially observed in the Eurasia region, but Mtoto's grave served as evidence that 78,000 years ago, our ancestors in Africa buried their dead young ones as well. Considering the deliberate process in which the child was buried, this further suggests that they too observe complex funeral rites. If anything, this incident showed that, much like most of us today, these early people in Africa already understood the ideas between life and death. We can even say that perhaps the concept of heaven and hell, or even reincarnation, wouldn't be that strange to them. Number four. 17 Miniature Coffins A distinctive, picturesque volcanic hill that rises up beyond Edinburgh's old town, Arthur's Seat, is a place shrouded with both history and mystery. Thought to be the possible site of King Arthur's fabled Kingdom Camelot, this hilly region was also once home to the ancient Celtic Vatadini tribe in 400 AD. 
Strange and enigmatic as it already is, the weirdest story to ever come out of this place supposedly began in June of 1836. Around this time, a group of boys who were just looking for rabbit warrens stumbled upon a bizarre discovery that even now, no one can really make sense of. Concealed in between a few thin slabs of slate on the northeast side of Arthur Seat Hill were 17 tiny coffins. They were laid down undisturbed for an indeterminate amount of time, and no one knows who put them there. According to earlier reports, the objects were arranged in three tiers, two lower rows consisting of eight coffins, and the one remaining was on the top. Each coffin measured around 95 millimeters in length and was made of wood. And contained within were wooden figures carved and dressed in custom-made clothes. They were meticulously stitched and glued as if they were dolls of some sort. Eight of the 17 coffins survive to this day and are now on display at the National Museum of Scotland. At the time of its discovery, researchers and even pundits were clamoring to find out what exactly these objects' purpose was. The prevailing theory at that time suggested that they symbolized honorific burial. Burial of whom, though, no one knew. As if that wasn't already mysterious enough, in 1906, a newspaper published a story about a woman living in Edinburgh. She said that her father, who was referred to as Mr. B, had sometimes been visited by a daft man. This deaf mute individual supposedly drew on a piece of paper a picture resembling three small coffins. He wrote the dates 1837, 1838, and 1840 under each one of the figures. And then came 1837, when one of the woman's relatives died. The following year, 1838, a cousin of her father died, and in 1940, Mr. B's own brother passed away. The strange man, said to have appeared during the last funeral, stared at Mr. B and then vanished, never to be seen again. Could the daft man be the perpetrator behind the making of these tiny coffins? Again, no one can really confirm. More theories emerged, including one in 1976, suggesting that they could be related to a German seafaring superstition. Supposedly, sailors keep mandrake roots or dolls in tiny coffins as talismans. The coffins, hidden in Arthur's seat, could be done by a merchant who intended to sell them to seafarers. Still, yet another widely held belief refers to the infamous serial killers William Burke and William Hare. The murderous duo reportedly ended the lives of 17 Edinburgh citizens. The killing spree happened less than a decade prior to the discovery. Once again, questions arise indicating the possibility that the coffins might represent the poor victims mercilessly dispatched by Burke and Hare. Despite all these explanations being put forward though, the Arthur Seat 17 miniature coffins, their origins and purpose will continue to boggle everyone's minds. Number three, 175,000 year old underground circles. If you recall somebody a Neanderthal today, it's synonymous to describing them as a person possessing unsophisticated manners. However, that connotation may soon be changed. In February of 1990, a 15-year-old boy walked into a secret chamber of Brunequel Cave for the first time in hundreds of thousands of years. The cave, which sits in France's scenic Aveyron Valley, has an entrance that had long been blocked by an ancient rock slide. The boy's father, a cave explorer himself, was the first to notice a faint wisp of air seething through the ancient pile of debris. And curious, they then spent three years clearing away the rubble. Now passable, the teenager, together with the members of a local caving club, made their way through that passage. Once inside, they found themselves in a large, roomy corridor that leads to a more intriguing interior. 
Finally, in the deeper part of the cave, the group of explorers stumbled across something extraordinary. Inside were several stalagmites, which had been broken deliberately. Even more mysterious was the fact that most of the 400 pieces of broken stalagmites had been arranged into two rings. The large one measured between four to seven meters across, while the smaller one was just about two meters wide. The other pieces were then propped up against the two major formations. Right inside the rings were found traces of fire and a mass of burnt bones. Everyone present there at the time knew that these weren't natural formations, let alone the work of cave animals. These were definitely the work of humans. Or were they? Archaeologists who later came onto the scene used carbon dating to determine as to when each stalagmite had been snapped off for construction. And their findings showed that each one was done 176,500 years ago, give or take a few millennia. Considering this, experts suggest that these formations couldn't have been the work of Homo sapiens. As surprising as it may sound, the glaring data indicated that the builders could really be the only early humans to ever roam in the south of France during that time, Neanderthals. With this evidence in hand, it's now believed that Neanderthals, our closest hominid cousin, were actually more sophisticated than what we give them credit for. What we thought of as simple-minded brutes who couldn't keep up with the more quick-thinking Homo sapiens could actually be technically skilled. To paint a clearer picture of what happened in that cave hundreds of thousands of years ago, researchers surmised that a group of Neanderthals broke the stalagmites and arranged them precisely as what they see now. Confronted with difficulties, they could have also used fire to crack some of the tougher rocks as shown in more than 120 fragments that have red and black streaks in them. These new findings could actually offer us a much deeper understanding of the species whom we allegedly eradicated in the evolutionary contest. Perhaps this time around, we'll be using the word Neanderthal not as an insult, but as a term referring to a once proud and intelligent, archaic human race. Number 2. The Altamura Man in 1993, a group of cave explorers, or speleologists in southern Italy, came upon a grisly find. A human skull covered in a thick layer of calcite formations. The remains lie in what scientists call a karst borehole, or in layman's terms, a sinkhole. And then this is where running water and limestone gave rise to the stalactite formation. But almost three decades since its discovery, experts still can't excavate what the scientific world refers to as the Ultimura Man, as they fear that if they dig out the remains, it could cause irreparable damage. Because of this, archaeologists can do nothing but simply theorize what really happened to this unfortunate individual who got stuck in such a precarious position where only his head and part of one shoulder are visible. This is what scientists thought had happened. A long time ago, a man fell into a natural well. It was believed that he was on his own considering that there's no one there to offer him rescue. And unable to free himself, he remained there for several days until starvation or dehydration took his life. Experts believe that the cave system where he fell into gradually took over, thereby preserving his final resting place. And through time, his skeletal remains became engulfed with limestone deposits, resulting to a calcite-rich stalactite formation. Basically, he became integrated with the cave itself. Initial estimates suggest that the age of the remains could be anywhere between 40,000 to 60,000 years old. However, through the years, new aging and genetic techniques were used, and this is what they could confirm. The rock encased man was actually a Neanderthal who lived at least 190,000 years ago. This makes the Altamura man the oldest Neanderthal bone sample ever examined. Besides his age, their findings also suggest that he was a young adult 
who had some dental problems as indicated by his two missing teeth. Like a treasure trove, scientists couldn't be more excited to research further into his life and other people during his time. But then again, they have to first figure out how to safely remove him from the calcite enclosure that's imprisoned him for eons. Number one, bones of giant lemurs. Lemurs are Madagascar's flagship species. Though they can now be found anywhere else in the world, these mouse to cat sized primates with striped colored tails have all originated from this African island. Surprisingly though, these animals aren't always as what they appear to be. At least that's what these new slates and discoveries have revealed. In 2015, the scientific community was astounded to hear the news about researchers finding a bonanza of skeletal remains from giant lemurs in a flooded cave in Madagascar. It may sound unbelievable, but it's already been known that there were at least 17 species of supersized lemurs that once roamed the island. These gigantic primates were said to be 20 times heavier than the average counterparts living today. Some of them even weighing up to 400 pounds. But after humans arrived in Madagascar, these massive creatures began to disappear at a rapid rate. So much so that only about 500 years ago, the race of giant lemurs had completely vanished. No one knows for sure what caused their mass extinction. It's easy to think though, that uncontrolled hunting may have largely contributed to their extermination. Since the 1800s, researchers have been finding bones of giant lemurs on the island. The Duke Lemur Center, for example, has in their possession thousands of specimens collected over 25 years since they conducted research on the island. And yet, this recent discovery of giant lemur bones was thought to be the largest ever since. About 150 feet down in a freshwater cave, laid a graveyard filled with the remains of these enormous creatures. One particular specimen, a jawbone, was analyzed and it was found to be around 1,500 years old. The glaring question now is, what could have been the cause of these numerous deaths? Were they perhaps brought to this part of the cave to be butchered? Contrary to initial theories, researchers said that this huge specimen deposit may have arrived there through flooding. This made sense considering that Madagascar is often subject to severe storms and cyclones. The bones, which at some point were largely scattered, may have been washed out and gradually ended up in this area of the cave. Scientists noted that this collection of giant lemur bones was found on the surface of the cave floor. This layer is just but a small fraction of the many other levels buried deep below. There must be a huge wealth of data and information trapped below those lower levels, just waiting to be discovered and analyzed. And if we can get there, we'll get a better grasp as to what the island looked like millions of years ago. Perhaps the hidden layers could also reveal a newer species, and these lemurs might have been even bigger. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you've made it this far, please subscribe and hit those notifications so that you know whenever we're dropping a new video. I'll see you in the next one.